I've been a software developer for seven years now, but I still remember my first day like it was yesterday. My first day in this career. Everything's new, exciting. I had all these ideas. I had all these, you know, fun things I wanted to do and this, you know, with code. I had all these project ideas. I had all this stuff I was so excited for. I sat down and then in that desk in orientation and I looked around and I said, I said to myself, I've made it. I've made it to the spot where I've spent years and years of studying, practicing, interviewing. I finally made it and landed in my first job. And I remember looking around and being so excited. But then something happened. I remember I walked into the room that I was going to be spending eight hours a day and spending all this time coding in. And it, I remember distinctly it was a, it was, oh, this small like windowless room it was dark and there was like five desks we were all kind of cramped in there like you know keyboards and I'm thinking to myself okay you know this is fine right like this you know this is okay and I remember about three weeks into there I I knew that I was I knew this was going to be a long journey ahead and I slowly began to realize that this wasn't as exciting as I initially thought. You know, I started to get into kind of the groove of, you know, making pull requests and uh, reading code and, you know, picking up uh, stories and all that stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, this kind of just feels like work. It doesn't really feel like what I thought it was going to be. It doesn't... It doesn't quite feel like what was initially sold to me as an idea because, you know, I like anyone else, I go on YouTube and I look at day in the life videos of software developers and I see all this fun, you know, crazy stuff. People people flying helicopters to their first job. I'm I'm taking a blimp over my you know, my yacht to do programming and I'm going out to lunch thirty times a day and, you know, do all this crazy stuff and that's not at all what it's like. And in reality, that's it's kind of like watching a reality TV show. It's just not real. It's 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 fake. It's you're selling the illusion of what is not, and it's it's that to me was a very difficult transition because I realized that this was simply just work, and it was simply another job. And I remember thinking to myself, I would go down and and you know walk um, just to kind of take a break from the screen and and just take a break and I remember thinking to myself did I make the right choice did I make the right choice and this was very a very difficult question to ask myself because for the first time I was reflecting back on my decisions thus far and I was questioning them I was questioning did I study the right thing did I study you know and let's, you know, I'm not saying it flippantly, like four years. Like, did I spend four years studying the right thing? I mean, it was a massive question to be asking myself. And I'm sure that that's the question a lot of you are asking too, because with AI being incorporated, like there's a lot of like uncertainty in the job market right now. And I can totally get it because I felt like uh, this way, like I was asking these same questions. I was asking did I make the right choice? Should I have done something else? And I remember as I was ascending those stairs back up to the office and I sat at my desk and I just kind of stared blankly ahead of me. And I really thought to myself, honestly, I probably zoned out for the next 10 minutes just reflecting on this question. And as I kind of eased back into my task and encoded, my mind just kind of went blank. And it was a strange thing that happened. I almost felt like I was just kind of becoming numb to my surroundings. Like I was just kind of becoming one with the the machine in a a sense. I was becoming just another another gear in the system. And this went on for about six, six months to a year. And I just kind of was going through the motions. Just, um, just showing up to work early, I should say. And, coming home and repeating and that was kind of the the cycle no longer was I in the cycle of school where I had a very rigid schedule now I was in the working world where really this was it and this was going to be 
my schedule for the foreseeable future. And I've talked about that on this before, the channel before, but I had a little calendar booklet that I had gotten at a previous um, job. And I remember saying to myself, by the time that I fill out all these pages on the calendar, I will be doing something else. That calendar was a year calendar. And here I am, seven years later, doing the same thing. And I remember two years in, I, after, you know, going through about six months to a year of kind of just going through the motions, I revisited this old question that I had been asking myself of, did I study the right thing? But this time I did something about it. I didn't sit passively by and ruminate on this question. I chose instead to act on it, and I began to pick up a couple books and actually dive into the topic of software development more in depth. I began to take action and learn and go beyond what I had initially learned in school, and now I began to search and dig and learn about software development on a greater scale, and I began to study more in depth topics like .NET and SQL. And as I began to do that, I began to realize something. And the thing that I realized is that I was not going to find fulfillment in this career unless I specifically set out purposefully to find that fulfillment. And it wasn't going to, I'm not going to be fulfilled in a passive way. I have to actively seek out fulfillment and purpose in this career. And if I don't, it's going to pass me by and I'm just going to feel like I'm going through the motions. So it was that moment where I, in which I started to read and I started to truly invest in learning for myself and becoming um, even more educated on the topics is that's when it truly clicked. That's when I got um, interviews and other job offers, and I saw, um, I started to see, you know, career progression, and I started to get raises, and I started to get all these things as a result of putting time and energy back into learning and continuing learning. And that's when it really clicked for me is that I didn't meet, I didn't reach the end of my goal. Meaning my goal was to get the job, and I got the job, but that was just the beginning. Now my goal is to get, is to become excellent at the job, and that goal is in a, is a a long, arguably life lifelong pursuit of understanding and knowledge, and that's where I'm at. Now I've kind of ebbed and flowed from that, and there's been ups and downs certainly, and I've faced burnout. I've faced time where I've had to step away from the job for an extended period of time just for my own um, well-being. But I've come back to it, and I've always come back to now, like, understanding that I need to actively make this job into something that I like because it's not going to do it, you know, by itself. With school, you kind of have the advantage of things are kind of laid out for you. In a job that's not so you kind of have to lay the foundation at the job that you're in. And laying the foundation is a skill that I had not yet acquired, but it's something that I'm trying to figure out. And I'm trying to say, like, hey, here's where I need to be in five years. You know, the question we always get asked is, where do you want to be in five years? But the question that you need to be asking yourself, or saying to yourself, rather, is, where do I need to be in five years? And honestly, we can reframe that as more of an active statement, like, I need to be here in five years. And as a junior dev, you should be saying, I need to be a senior dev in five years because you can do it. It's possible because I did it. And you just have to study and put your mind to it because you will, for a fact, get there. But it just takes time and effort and a lot of patience. And there will be good days and bad days. I've had them, I understand. But it just it's just something that takes time. But when you look at where you, when you are five years down the road and you look back, you're going to be grateful that you honestly put the time and energy into learning this craft. But you're going to be grateful that you didn't let the opportunity slip. Because I could have easily just let this slip by and say, oh, I guess this is it. And just sit in my little, you know, cubicle and type it away. I didn't do that though. But I did that for a while in the beginning and I wasn't happy. 
I wasn't happy, but I chose to finally, after about a year and a half, do something about it. But I almost quit numerous times. I've almost quit numerous times. And after all those times, I've always regretted it. And I've always kind of like kicked myself for thinking about why did I want to quit? Like what's wrong with me? And I've realized it's just it's just natural because like we're 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 all human beings. We have be- good days and bad days. And but it's what do we make of it? What how do we turn those bad days into good days? And how do we make this career into something that we actually enjoy? Because life's too short to not enjoy the thing that you do. And software development, I've learned honestly the hard way that you have to put energy into making it good. Otherwise, it probably won't be. And that's just the reality. So thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.